Hi, we're going to talk about factoring. Um, I realize this is a disconnect for a lot of kids at the, as they reach the upper levels, um, whether they're in pre-cal or whether they're in calculus. To begin with, we're going to start by how to multiply them because, of course, if we can't multiply back our polynomials, we can't check our factors. And then we're going to move into different kinds of factors. And remember, this is a long video set, so if you have to pause, rewind, that's okay. Remember, once you find something that works for you, that's okay. You can reject the other ones as long as you have one for all methods or you have one for binomials and for the rest. It's, that's okay. So first of all, multiplying by, uh, polynomials, we're going to first talk about multiplying binomials. What is a binomial? A binomial is something that has two terms. And so that's literally like something plus something or something minus something when you think about that polynomial set. Um, we can only use the FOIL method when we talk about binomials. This isn't a good method for trinomials or polynomials with four terms or higher, etc. But why do we teach this? Because math is simply pattern recognition. And it gets a lot easier when you can recognize those patterns. And what we're going to move on to next are rationals and conjugations. And you can't, you know, not that you can't, but it's harder to recognize a conjugate if you don't know how to FOIL. Here's a visual representation of what that looks like. That first, outer, inner, and last. But I'm going to give you one more visual representation. So what does FOIL mean? Again, first term, outer terms inner terms and the last terms of your binomials. So here's what that looks like. We can multiply 2x times 3x. We can multiply our outer terms 2x times 2. We can multiply our inner terms 3 times 3x and we can multiply our last terms 3 times 2. But what does that look like total? Like how does it actually factor out? How do we actually multiply it out and look at look at our polynomial? Well let's see that first term is going to become 6x squared. Second term is going to become 4x inner term is going to become 9x and last term is going to become 6. And so what did I put in between? I put either plus or minus depending. You just basically keep the signs. Then you combine like terms, 4x and 9x combine, and that becomes 6x squared plus 13x plus 6. Why couldn't I combine the others? Because you have to look at how many variables you have, what kind of variable it is, um, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And since this variable is x and there's two of them, this is x and there's one, we can combine. This has no x. Okay, the other method we can use if we cannot FOIL would be distribution. So what happens if it's not a binomial? What happens if it's a trinomial or a single nomial, a monomial, sorry, um, or four terms or five terms or ten terms? Well, we just use simple distribution for that point. But the reason why we teach FOIL, again, is so that we recognize patterns. But this is what a distribution could look like. So here's our original question up top. And I'm basically taking that first term and distributing it to all three terms in my second polynomial take that middle term, distribute it, and I finally take that last term and distribute it. But if this is hard to recognize, I went ahead and color coded it. So here's that first term multiplied by the first term, first term multiplied by the second term, first term multiplied by the third term, middle term multiplied by first, middle by middle, middle by last, last by first, last by middle, and last by last. And as you can see, I created three new lines. If I just take those three lines, and bring them on down. Well, I didn't just bring them down straight. I actually brought them down um, in their in their higher order power. So eights, then sevens, and six, and five, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But here I can combine again. So I look. My highest power is to the eighth. There's only one, so I'm good there. My highest next highest power is to the seventh. There's two. I can combine those. Then to the sixth again. There's two. I can combine those to the fifth. There's only one. I'm going to leave it alone. Squared. There's only one. I'm going to leave it alone x, there's only one, and by itself, the constant is only by itself. So I combine only the values that have multiples, and that's my end answer. I have provided an example here. If you want to go ahead and try it, test your metal, you can come see me in class if you're like, if you need the answer for this. But now we're going to go ahead and move on to factoring. Again, this is a long video set. Pause and rewind when necessary. If one method doesn't make sense, skip it. Look for titles, okay, as you're skipping. Look for title changes. That means that I changed what kind of factor I did. Um, find the method that works for you and stick with it. The very first method is greatest common factor. We should all know this method, and we should all be using this method. But this simply tells me if I have multiple terms of something, I can pull that out, whether it's a variable or a number. Okay, and I want to take them out as many times as I can, the greatest number of times that I can. That's why it's called the greatest common factor. So we have this example, 3x plus 2x squared. And the first question I ask myself is, what is the same in every term? And if I look at it, I see that there's an x in the first term and there's an x in the second term. The threes and twos don't matter. But how many x's are there in the first term? One. And how many x's are there in the second term? 
two. So that also tells me how often I'm going to pull it out. So I go ahead and set myself up with parentheses, put the factored term on the outside. Then I ask myself, how many times did I pull that out? Well, I pulled it out one time. That means I can't be left with an X, so I'm left with three. I ask myself on the second one, how many times did I pull that out? Well, I pulled out one X, so I'm still left with one X, so I'm left with two times that X. And that's my finished answer for my greatest common factor. Here's my second example. And so this one shows you that we have maybe potentially more than one greatest common factor. In fact, we have y's in every term, but look at our constants. Look at, sorry, look at those coefficients, okay? There's three, there's negative nine, and there's positive six. Well, guess what? What's common throughout that? A three, three goes into three one time. Three goes into negative nine, three times. Three goes into six, two times, or negative three times, I guess, for that middle one. So I go ahead and I factor it out, and I put my factors down, my parentheses down, come on. I put my parentheses down, and I ask myself, what did I remove? Well, I removed a 3 from every term, and I'm going to go ahead and remove a y from every term. So what's left here if I remove 3? 1. What's left if I remove y? 1. So that's really just a 1. What's left here if I remove a y? Well, a y squared would be left. What's left here if I remove a 3? A negative 3 would be left. What's left here? A positive y. What's left here? A positive 2. So that would be my end answer. And I could rewrite this in the way that y'all are used to seeing it, negative 3y squared squared plus 2y plus 1. You could write it in standard form so that you can recognize it quicker. Okay, by grouping, this is one of my favorite methods to use, but you need at least four terms. I don't mean x to the fourth power. I mean four separate terms. Why is this my favorite one? Because you're actually going to use by grouping in multiple places throughout, so it's important to recognize this. If you hate by grouping, that's okay. There are other methods for you. But in essence, you kind of use by grouping within the other methods, so you kind of have to recognize this one. But I, I wrote out here, there's our visual representation of what's happening, and here are our steps. So we divide into two groups. As you can see, we literally just drew a line between those two, between those four terms. Then we factor out our greatest common factor in each of those. As you can see, 2x squared factored out of this first set, and 3 factored out of the second set. So what we actually end up with is another common factor, and it should be either a binomial or a trinomial at this point. If I pull out x minus 5, well, what I'm left with is 2x squared plus 3, and guess what? That's our other factor. So we now see our different factors. And if I want to test it back, we always do step 5, multiply to check back. Why do we always do step 5? Every now and then we make a mistake, so it's important that we check our work. So here I have a first example. I went ahead and grouped 4 and negative 18, and I went ahead and grouped 9xy and negative 2x. Technically, if you had grouped it a slightly different way, almost 9 times out of 10, as long as you recognize factors, 9 times out of 10, no matter which way you group it, you're going to come back with the same answer. Um, they might just look slightly different, but I promise they're probably the same answer. So I pull those out. So what I had grouped in red, now it's grouped. What I had in blue, now it's grouped. So as you can see, I have two very distinct groups. And I ask myself what's common in that. Well, what's common here was a 2. So I pulled out 2, was left with 2, was left with negative 9y. What's common here is the x, so I pull all that out. But as you can see, my binomial right here, they're not quite the same. They're slightly different. Well, if I want to make them exactly the same, all I would have to do right here is pull out a negative 1. So if I pull negative 1 out of negative or positive 9y, I should be left with negative 9y. If I pull negative 1 out of negative 2, I should be left with positive 2. And this x should change to a negative sign. Okay. Uh, sorry. Not, no, sorry my, my apologies. So now we're left with 2 common binomials. I can pull that binomial out and I'm left with 2 minus 9y and my final binomial is 2 plus x. If I wanted to test that back, I could, uh, uh, sorry, if I, I could multiply, I could FOIL back out. And I'm going to go ahead and test that. So my first terms, that's going to be 4. My outer terms, that's going to be 2x. Ah. My inner term is going to be 18y. And my outer term is going to be negative 9y. Uh, x, y. And as you can see, we are already at a mistake. Look at this. This was negative. This was positive. This is positive. This is negative. So what that tells you is Ms. Jag set this up so that we could see there was a small mistake, wasn't there? I said it out loud, but I wanted there to be a mistake in, the, <laughs> in my example. But I said it out loud. This should have been negative, right? If we pull a negative value out uh, from here, then where did that negative go? It can't just disappear. So this should have been negative. This should have been 2 minus x. So if we test that, let's see what happens. 2 
and that becomes negative 2x, and my inner terms become negative 18y.